All right, friends, I um, have another video here. Um, I recently was, um, I got a Bible and I was transferring some of my old notes from an older Bible into it. it took me a long time, it took me, uh, you know, multiple hours over multiple sessions. And uh, during that time, I listened to a, and I watched, well, I, I listened slash watched, whatever. And I've been over the last few days listening to and watching a series by a friend of mine, his name is Brian Ross. And uh, Brian Ross did a video series, uh, it was a teaching series on the two streams theory. Um, and I was very surprised at the information that he presented. Now, if you don't know what the two streams theory is, the two streams theory is, and I'm going to show you some charts here, but the two streams theory essentially is the, th the theory that all Bibles are either come from one of two streams. You have the pure Antiochian uh, stream, Byzantine stream, which ultimately King James comes from. And then you have the Alexandrian stream, which there's things on that stream. And that's where all the modern, modern versions come from. And basically all Bibles all only come from two streams. Some people have even said that. Um, and that's kind of been, that's my understanding of the theory. It was popularized by certain people like Peter Ruckman, Gail Ripplinger, uh, J.J. Ray. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but I wanted to do a video because the things that Brian Ross presented were very helpful. And I tried to take a bunch of his content and boil it down. And I want to try to get through this. And just because his video series is very long, I'm going to link his video series um, in the, I'll put a link to it in the description and I'm going to, uh, you can also, I'll put a link to, he has got a 98 page PDF. Okay. Now I want to give a disclaimer here. I'm a Texas receptus advocate. Okay. And, uh, I, I, but I care about truth and I'm not in any way trying to disparage the King James Bible and, uh, Brian Ross himself, he's, he's not a modern critical text, uh, proponent either. Um, but here's the thing. Anything that's true, right, whatever it is, whether it's a doctrine, anything, should never be supported by misinformation or lies. Because if you actually defend the truth with lies, you set people up to depart from the truth because they'll realize that the legs that you propped the truth up on them in their minds, they'll realize that those legs are false. And what can happen is people can they can reject truth sometimes from bad ideas. Okay. So anytime you defend anything that's true or right, I mean, and just in general Christians, we're supposed to tell the truth. We're supposed to be honest and we should try to be charitable, you know, and things like that. Okay. So I want to go through, I already went through his document and his video series, and I want to summarize some of the main points, but I do want to encourage you to go read his, I'll include his 98 page PDF. By the way, me and Brian Ross, I'm sure we, I know we have things that we disagree on, uh, but I think his work on this particular, this particular thing is a very good very sound. Um, I think people should know about it. So I want to encourage you to look into it. Okay. So he says here that he's got resources that were harvested over the internet from period. Sometimes you know who they're from. Sometimes you don't. Okay. So I want to go through these and I want to just show you some of the, um, the, the things here. Okay. So here's, here's typically what it would look like. I just want to point out a couple things. So on the top left here, you have Antioch. And if you follow that line all the way down, you have the King James Bible on the right side. You have Alexandria. This is, you know, you got, and then on the very bottom uh, right, you'll see all this th stuff here with the, with the versions and the translations and stuff. You see all that. So, um, but I want you to notice a couple things. I want you to notice here the Peshitta in this Antioch stream. I want you to notice that. Um, we're going to talk about that. Um, I'm just looking through here. There's some other things. I don't see anything else to comment on. Um, on the right side, I want you to note, notice that the Douay Reims Bible is listed on the Alexandrian or the corrupt line. Okay, I want you to notice that. Um, we're going to talk about that. But just notice, no Syrian Peshitta on the pure, Douay Reims on the right. And by the way, this is from Jack Mormon's book, Forever Settled. Okay, that's a book that I've actually read. Okay, here's another chart. These are just some charts to show you this two-stream theory. You can see uh, you have that pure Antiochian stream in the green. Uh, notice again, you have the old Syriac. That would be the Syriac Peshito. 
But notice also the Old Gothic. The Old Gothic. You notice that? And then you have some English Bibles and some other things on here uh, going up. And then you have this red line right here going down to Vaticanus. You have Jerome's Latin. Um, notice it, but notice again, notice the Douay Reims right here. Okay, I want you to notice that. That's going to be important. Notice the Douay Reims on the corrupt line, the Gothic and the Syriac, and the pure Antiochian line. Okay. Also, uh, it's interesting they put the New King James here. Um, the New King James is not actually... Well, actually, the New King James is based on one of the editions of the TR. A lot of people don't know that, but whatever, I digress, okay? Um, notice on the bottom chart, again, so the theory is, you know, the church was strong in Antioch in the book of Acts, and you can see that starting right here, right? The church was strong starting in Antioch, and there's this line of preservation. I apologize if it's a little bit fuzzy, but notice the Syrian-type Peshito again. Okay, notice that there. Um... And then that's the only thing I want to write, look at there. Okay, here's another chart. We don't exactly know who this is from, okay? Um, but uh, no, no, so let's see. On the left side, pretty standard. I mean, you can see the corrupted line again. goes down to the modern versions. On the right side, not a whole lot to mention here. I do just want to mention, though, so that I, you kind of get this idea that there's this pure line of – texts and translations that read just like the King James Version going all the way from the Apostles down to today. Um, and, and if you look at the Bibles, like German, the the Luther Bible does not agree with the King James or, or the TR from the King James in every place. The Spanish Reign of Valera, um, now there is a Reign of Valera Gomez today that does agree pretty much jot for jot, tittle for tittle with the King James. But the original Spanish Reign of Valera published in 1602, it's got some differences. They're minor, but still differences from the King James. Um, you know, and I mean, Tyndale doesn't always agree 100% of the time with the King James, nor do Coverdale or Matthew or the Geneva Bible or the bishops. Um, so it's interesting. It's just interesting when you look at these charts, how they put some of these things on, on these lines. Now, now, granted, these are all a whole lot similar to each other and do the King James, you know, than they would be to like any of these modern versions or, I mean, some of these Greek texts, there, there are some, a lot, a little bit more substantial differences between what you would see over here and then what you would see on this right side. Okay. Okay. So notice this is another one. You have the original manuscripts on top, which they're saying was in Koine Greek comes down to the church at Antioch and the church at Syria. Notice again, though, the Peshitta, the Syriac or Syrian Peshitta and the pure line. Now, another thing to point out is John Wycliffe here is saying that it comes from the church at Antioch, but the Wycliffe Bible was translated from the Latin Vulgate, which a lot of charts and a lot of people would put the Latin Vulgate in the corrupt stream. John Wycliffe was not translated. His Wycliffe translation was not from the TR. It was from the Latin Vulgate. And John, the John Wycliffe Bible has a lot of readings that would not agree with the, with the King James or the Texas Receptus. Okay, so that's it. And then again, you'll see these Bibles over here. Okay, here's another one. Original manuscripts, Gnostic corruptions. Not a whole lot here to see. This is trying to show a corrupt line. I think this is a... Comp a, a Maybe a companion to the previous one that we just looked at. Here's where they're all together. But again, you can see Wycliffe here is being put in the pure line on the left, not the Gnostic corrupted line on the right. And the Syriac Peshitta is here again. I'm, I'm, I know I'm emphasizing it's a lot of repetition. These are just different charts. We're just trying to give you an idea. This chart might be a little bit harder to read. You have the two lines. Um, you have the corrupt line on the right and the pure line on the left. So again, I just want to make mention that in this this quote pure line, or well, I don't know if they say it would say pure, but there are some again minor differences from the Bishop's Bible and the Geneva Bible, you know, and some of these others. Tend to, but again, look, Wycliffe's over here, but Wycliffe is from the the Latin. Okay, which they have Jerome's Latin Vulgate over here, which that's not exactly the same as maybe what would have existed when Wycliffe translated from, but there would be a high, I believe, 
I, I, I think I would say a high degree of agreement between Jerome's Latin Vulgate and and the Latin that Wycliffe would have translated from. I might be a little bit off on that, but, you know, Luther, you have the old Latin here. But notice here, the Gothic Bible of Ulfius, okay, and the Syriac Peshitta, which they're, they're stacking this on top of the, t the Texas Receptus. Sorry about that. But again, Wycliffe is not from the Texas Receptus. Okay, so this chart's not really accurate. Um, let's see, there's some other stuff. I'm just looking to see if there's anything here else that I want to point out. Um, again, but again, Lo no, Jerome's. I want to see if the Douay Reims is on the right. I don't see the Douay Reims on the right on this one. Okay, and we, uh, we don't know where all these charts are. This is from Bible Battle, Babble by Peter Ruckman. This is the corrupt line. Um, notice that the Vulgate is here, uh, the Latin Vulgate. Um, but notice also, notice how the Douay Reims Bible is here. Do you see that? This is the corrupt tree, and the Douay Reims is on it. Okay. Okay, this is another one from the Bible Babble by Peter Ruckman. This is supposed to be the, the good tree. Notice what's on here. The Peshitta, the Wycliffe Bible, which, again, the Wycliffe Bible was not from the Texas Receptus. My understanding is from the Latin Vulgate. Okay. Um, and by the way, the old uh, Brian Ross has a section on the Old Latin and... If you go back to the previous page, the Old Latin and Jerome's Latin, and they're actually mixed text. It's so like sometimes Jerome's Latin, you know, anyway, whatever. You can read Brian Ross. I'm not going to go into that. Brian Ross, you can read. He has a whole section where he where he examines the Old Latin and the Latin Vulgate, okay? So, okay, let's see here. Okay, so I already went over that. Here's another one. Notice the Peshitta on the good tree. And the Wycliffe Bible, again, the Wycliffe Bible is not from the Texas Receptus. On the corrupt tree, you have the Douay Reims Bible again, okay? The Douay Reims Bible. And the Clementine Vulgate, which I'm pretty sure the Clementine Vulgate would be very close to maybe what Wycliffe translated from, but the Clementine Vulgate was produced in 15, whatever, 92. Anyway, um, I will try to stick to speaking what I'm more competent about. Here's another one. God breathed original or left. Notice the Syriac Peshito. Again, notice that. Um, Wycliffe, again, I'm not going to repeat it because I've already done it a few times. Um, you know, like here, even here on this chart, I don't know what this chart from, even they acknowledge that the New King James is for generally, they're saying it's generally from the TR, and but they would say um, on here, um, it does have some translation readings that would read similarly to the way mo some of the more critical text translations have handled things. But its actual source text is correct from the TR, okay? In fact, this the New King James is way more based on the TR. And the, the New King James actually would be way closer to the King James than the Wycliffe Bible. I mean, way closer um, in a lot of its renderings and a lot of its readings. Um, but... Okay, let's see. Um, notice again, notice the Douay Reims here. Okay, the Douay Reims, again, in the corrupt line. Okay, here's another one. I don't, this is from J.J. Ray's book. And it's my little, this thing that I'm using to, to share my screen from my iPad is blocking it. But um, let's see. Here's the Douay Reims on a correct, this is a corrupt tree. Um and the Douay Reims is a Catholic Bible, by the way. I don't know if you know that, but you can research that. Okay, here's another tree. This is another corrupt tree. This is from Peter Ruckman. Um, notice the Douay Reims here again. You have the Vulgate and the Sinaiticus on the right, and you can, whatever, stop, pause, and look at that chart if you want to. God Only Wrote One Bible by J.J. Ray. Um, this is the pure line. Notice again, the Peshitta. You see that? You see that Peshitta? Okay. Wycliffe. Again, okay, I think we're almost done. Okay, so I want to I want to point go through some here. So Brian Ross um, talked about how he went to go teach this two streams thing, realized he never really looked at it, 
and he decided he wanted to look into the this. So he checked out the Gothic Bible. And he, you know, for example, Gail Ripplinger in her history of the Bible, Erasmus in the Received Text, uh, volume 2, 8500 to 1500. Brian Ross, this is from Brian Ross. He said he purchased it and read it. And he report, she reported that Ulfius used a Byzantine or King James type manuscript to translate the Gothic Bible in 350 AD. So Brian Ross said that he... He looked at the extant, that means the current existing Gothic Bible. He utilized the Wolfila Project website, uh, you know, whatever. But so he, so he said that he was able to compare the Gothic text against the Greek and English by the King James Bible. And so there's not a, com you, there's not a complete copy of the Gothic Bible, meaning like we have portions. Like we, we have a lot of it, but not every single part of it, okay? But there was a lot that he could that he could get. He also talked about how he got the goss a book. It's called the Gospels, the Gothic, the Anglo-Saxon, the Wycliffe, and the Tyndale versions in a parallel column. Okay, so um, Gail Ripplinger said that the Gothic Gospels, among the oldest of the vernacular versions, match the text of Erasmus and the King James Bible. Brian Ross, when he went on the this uh, this thing up here. And he checked it. He found that in Mark chapter 1, verse 2, the Gothic Bible has Isaiah the prophet instead of prophets. Okay? Which this is the TR in the in the King James Version reading. And this is what the critical text reads. And he goes here. You can see here, in Ezion. Ezion. This is the Gothic Bible. So notice that the Gothic Bible in Mark chapter 1, verse 2 reads like the critical text in the, the modern versions from it rather than the TR in the King James Version. In Colossians 1.14, it's the Gothic version is missing the phrase, we have redemption through his blood, which the King James and the TR do. 1 Timothy 3.16, um, it's in the King James and the TR, it says God was manifest in the flesh, but the Gothic Bible doesn't have it. In John 7, 53 through 8, 11, the whole story about the woman taking adultery is missing in the Gothic Bible, but it's found in the TR and the King James as well. The longer ending of Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse 9 through 20, is missing in the Gothic Bible. <laughs> Yet it's found in the King James Version and the TR. Okay? So, Brian Ross says, rather than being an objective emblem of textual purity, the Gothic, extant Gothic Bible is viewed more accurately as a mixed text. Sorry, I accidentally turned the page. As a mixed text. Ross goes on, Ripplinger is arguing that the Gothic, a Bible that contains readings in its extant copies that she would never tolerate in a modern version, is fundamentally the same text as the King James Bible. This is beyond my ability to comprehend and represents how far Ripplinger is willing to go to salvage the two streams of Bible paradigms. Okay, so remember all those charts that we saw and the few that and they put the Gothic Bible on the pure line? Yet the Gothic Bible has Isaiah the prophet instead of the prophets. It, it's missing the phrase through the blood. It's lacking the word God in 1 Timothy 3, 6. It's missing the woman taken in adultery. It's missing the longer ending of Mark. And, and these are all things that people like Gail Ripplinger and other people. And, you know, I, even I, I, I would, I think all these, these passages here in the King James and the TR are correct. But these are things that people are like, oh, see the modern version? It's, they're corrupt. And yet, this Gothic Bible by Gail Ripplinger and others like Ruckman and Gip and, um, you know, others who do some of these charts. Um, I don't know if Gip specifically, okay, but I, I believe in our charts, I, th I think Ruckman did. But uh, people put this Gothic Bible in the pure line, and yet look at this, okay? I agree with Ross. I don't know how anybody could. Now, we, I, in many of those charts, talked about the Syriac Peshito, Okay. Ross sa says that J.J. Ray and Peter Ruckman and David Sorensen put this Bible in the pure stream. Okay, he said, here's the following from, from Dr. David Sorensen in Touch Not the Unclean Thing, the text issue and separation. He, Brian Ross says it's emblematic of what is commonly said about the Peshitta in pro-King James literature. Quote, another ancient translation of the New Testament is the Syriac Peshitta version. It should be... Recalled that it was in Antioch of Syria that the disciples were first called Christians. Okay, again, however, the church at Antioch was sending was a sending church, as well as the home church of the Apostle Paul. 
Accordingly, a translation of the New Testament is here and was made in AD 150. This was called the Peshitta version. Uh, Wes uh, Hort acknowledged that this translation paralleled the received text. Of interest, the word Peshitta means common, blah, 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 blah. It would approximate to the later sense of the received text. So he, they're tra he's trying to draw, Swords is trying to draw a parallel between the received text, the Textus Receptus, and the Peshitta, because the word Peshitta means like common. Okay. He says that uh, the Peshitta was translated from a Greek text rooted in the received text. So he's saying the Peshitta is from the received text, a.k.a. the Texas Receptus. And there's and, and he's saying it's one of the earliest churches of the Christian era, and they use a translation of the New Testament based on the received text. Based on the received text. You see that? And he says this is a clear indication the received text was the true text of the New Testament with its roots leading to the uh, autograph. And now, if I read that, I would think that what David Sorensen is saying is that the Syriac Peshitta reads like the TR and the King James Version. Okay? Brian Ross says, please note, neither Ray nor Sorensen cite any textual examples as evidence to substantiate their claims regarding the Peshitta. Rather, in the case of Ray, he appeals to the authority of other writers such as William, G. William, Bergon, Miller, Robinson, or Vetter to substantiate his claims. This same could be said for a host of other pro-King James books. By the way, that's very true. In a lot of literature on the Bible translation issue, um, a lot of people will quote other people. And I, I, we'll talk at the end about that. But um, um, if you notice, Sorensen doesn't actually give any examples in his book. And um, we'll talk a little bit about that. But So Ross says, using the Peshitta New Testament website, I was able to check readings of the English translation of the Peshitta for myself against the King James. And in Mark 1, chapter 2, verse 2, the Peshitta has Isaiah the prophet instead of the King James TR prophets. In Colossians 1, 14, it's missing through we have redemption through his blood and god is missing from first timothy 3 16 god was manifest in the flesh probably has like he was manifest in the flesh so again is this this are is this the reading of the texas receptus no is this what the king james reads no so how can david Sorensen and other people put the syriac Peshitta in this pure line how can he do that how can they do that? I think a lot of them just don't know. Okay, we're going to talk about. So, how is it that all that there are these charts that are so common, and there's this thinking of these two streams? Like Sam Gipp did a video series, for example, on YouTube where he is having this. You know, it's like a whole video where he promotes this two streams. All all Bibles come from two one of two sources. They're either from the Alexandrian corrupt line or from they're from the pure received text uh, Syrian Antiochian line. And yet, when you look at the evidence, it doesn't fit the narrative and the people who make these claims if you read these books they don't give any well they don't give a lot if any evidences of readings to show this to support this now let's talk about i wanted to talk about the Douay reams bible because you, you notice in almost all those in a lot of those charts okay maybe not almost but a lot of them the sorry the Douay reams bible was put in the corrupt line the Douay reams bible james ross took this meme where he talks about where it says almost all modern versions including the NIV, remove 16 verses from the new testament and he said that he downloaded a PDF copy of the original Reams New Testament and checked all these verses and all 16 of the verses that are omitted from the modern versions were in the Catholic Reams New Testament. And he says textually, which means based on the source text, one would be better off reading a Reams New Testament than they would a modern version. Now, I will say the Reams New Testament's got some bad translations. Um, I think the Reams New Testament... Instead of instead instead of translating metanoeo as repentance, they translate as do, pen, do penance. So instead of repent, uh, do penance. Okay, that's a translation issue. But like the Douay Reams Bible has First John five seven, like the Douay Reams Bible reads a lot like the King James in a lot of places. So and yet the Reams in the modern versions are listed in the same stream of transmission, and yet. The Reams Bible reads very close in a lot of places. And I'm not promoting the Douay Reams. I'm not Roman Catholic. I'm sure the Douay Reams has problems, okay? Uh, but the Douay Reams is not in the same stream as like the NIV or um, some of the other versions. 
And, and, and so if you actually were to look at like a lot of the Bibles in the corrupt stream, they got a lot of difference. And then, but the Bibles in the, in the pure stream, they have what would be considered corrupt readings by people like Ripplinger, Gip, Ruckman, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. All right. So, um, I wrote this out earlier, but, um, so there was a guy named Benjamin Wilkinson. He was a seven day Adventist. I want to say in the thirties. Okay. And he wrote a book called the authorized version vindicated. And he is Brian Ross claims. And I think he's probably right. Claims that this two streams theory really comes from him. He was a seven day Adventist and he is the, the one that seems to first kind of give this idea that, well, you know, some of these Bibles, I don't remember if, which ones he said, but Syriac, Gothic. And by the way, I would venture to say that if we checked other Bibles on that pure line, we would find instances of readings that people like Ruckman and Ripplinger and Gip would consider corrupt. So Wilkinson wrote his book and J.J. Ray, J.J. Ray actually plagiarized a lot, a large portion of Wilkinson, like word for word. I don't, well, I, I would say plagiarized. I think Brian Ross proves that he plagiarized. And J.J. Ray put out a book in the 50s that was basically a rehash of Wilkinson's. Now, by the way, let me just make a side note. A lot of people point this out and, and a lot of people will say defense of the King James Version and the TR and the received text uh, really came from him, from Wilkinson. While Wilkinson popularized the two streams theory, um, there there is historic defense of the received text, um, even in like in the 16 and 1700s by like the Protestant reformers um, and people like that. So defense of the received text, and there are were people who defended the King James Version uh, long before Wilkinson, okay? So defense of the TR does not rise on Wilkinson, okay? But Wilkinson did popularize the well he I think he I think he created the two streams there. If you read his writings, like if you read Wilkinson's book, he does not give one single textual example from any of the versions that he lists in the pure stream. Not a single one. And Wilkinson, he also appeals to what he call what the seven day Adventists call the spirit of prophecy. Okay? Sorry, I'm some of what I'm writing is not showing up on my actual um, tablet screen, but it's showing up on the computer screen. So forgive my sloppy handwriting, okay? So Wilkinson puts out this book. J.J. Ray basically plagiarizes it. And then Ruckman picked up J.J. Ray's book. In fact, I believe in Ruckman's books, he actually mentions how he's indebted to J.J. Ray. And then you can, like, if you look at the charts at the beginning, some of Ruckman's charts are, like, super identical to J.J. Ray's, okay? And then not only Ruckman, but uh, a guy named David Otis Fuller in the 70s, he wrote a book called Witch Bible, and there was a series of essays in it. And one of the essays was material from Wilkinson. Now, in, J in Fuller's book, he kind of removed hints that Wilkinson was Seventh-day Adventist. Didn't really mention that he was a Seventh-day Adventist. And a lot of uh, fundamentalists uh, read Fuller's book called Witch Bible. And a lot of independent Baptists have read Fuller's book, Witch Bible. And I, I believe, I would say, Fuller is probably the one for kind of taking Wilkinson stuff and bringing it largely into the independent, uh, to a lot of independent Baptists, okay? And Fuller rehash a lot of Wilkinson stuff. Again, Wilkinson stuff didn't have any example of textual issues and, and things like that. And then Ruckman comes along and Ruckman popularizes it. And Gail Ripplinger repeats a lot of it. And Gip, uh, Gip, I believe, was trained by Peter Ruckman uh, at Ruckman School. And Gip and Ripplinger promote it. And then the problem is there are other King James only people who come along and repeat some of this stuff. People like D.A. Waite, um, David Cloud even, um, you saw David Sorensen. David Sorensen put the, put the Syriac Bible again, and, and they don't give examples. And if you read a lot of these people, they don't give you just examples. And so you got to be careful. Like, 
you you know, a lot of people say and write a lot of stuff, and it's it's. I hate to say it, but in this day, you got to confirm a lot of stuff, you, or you have to make sure the person that you're reading is worthy. Like Gail Ripplinger has a huge problem with manipulating quotes. In fact, if you look at Ross's PDF, he gives an example of where Gail Ripplinger manipulated a quote that the Cambridge uh, somebody from Cambridge had written about the Gothic Bible, and she left some things out be that would have indicated that the Gothic Bible doesn't read exactly like the King James and the tech and the received text. Okay. And then, you know, I'm not saying like Sam Gipp or I don't know if Sam Gipp or Ruckman or Waite or Sorensen or Cla I'm not saying these guys are purposefully lying, but they repeat, sorry, they repeat information that is not factual and is somewhat misleading. So anyway, I'm a received text advocate. Okay. I'm not a modern critical text proponent, okay? But there is so much that said, especially from like the Ruckman, Ripplinger, Gip types. You know, they're like like Gail Ripplinger um, has a book called Hazardous Materials, which I did a video on it. Go on, go on my I did a whole video on uh, Gail Ripplinger, and she takes people out of context. Like you can't you can't trust Gail Ripplinger, you know. And then Sam Gip. I mean, he repeats this two stream stuff. And the impression that people get is there's this unbroken, traceable stream where we can look at ancient versions and translations and we can see they all miraculously read exactly like the received text and the King James Version. And, it, and when you actually go out and you start looking at and, and researching this for yourself, you realize the way that it's presented doesn't really match with reality. And that can shake up your faith. Because if you think, if you think, if you've embraced this two streams model and you've been taught by it, that can be damaging, damaging. So uh, I'll please go and read Brian Ross's PDF. Please go and read, um, uh, watch Brian Ross's videos. Beware of the two streams theory. It has serious lacking in just historical facts and evidence. And it's, it's just misleading. And it's just not true. And uh, we need to speak the truth. Um, truth doesn't need lies to defend it. Um, you know, so thank you for, if you're taking the time to watch this video, if you like this kind of content, please like, please comment, please subscribe. And uh, thank you and have a nice day.